Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and the Airbus A320 Neo, or more specifically, the fly-by-wire mod edition of the Airbus A320 Neo. And what this short little video is going to do is have a look at some of the newer features that have been implemented over the last couple of weeks with the McDo. And all credit to the fly-by-wire team, they are doing such an amazing job of, uh, of modding this aircraft and I wanted to show you some of the new features and uh, how to access them. One of the best things I think is now that you've actually got weather. You can get the live weather, the ATIS etc and the Meta reports right here in your McDo giving it a much more realistic feeling than having to look online somewhere whilst you're, uh, whilst you're flying or of course getting the um, weather from uh, from ATIS. You can get it uploaded straight to your McDo. So let's just dive straight in. Uh, what I do need to do before we go anywhere is just put a, uh, a, a random cover of airports in. So we're currently sat at Boston uh, in USA. So let me just pop that in. So okay. BOS. And oh now actually this is just flagged up one of the uh, one of the problems a lot of people have they say they're trying to put stuff in and nothing's happening well that's because you've got GPS primary written here in the uh, scratch pad so just press the clear button get rid of that oh and there we can see that was what I was typing so okay Boston and oh wow pick an airport Dallas Fort Worth uh, Kilo Delta Foxtrot Whiskey so Boston to Dallas pop that in there and uh, not in database. Have I put something wrong in there? Uh, let me just try again. BOS. Uh, oh, let's go with a known one, shall we? I may have put the wrong code in. So, Boston to JFK. They're not actually that far apart, those two airports, but that, uh, that doesn't matter. Okay, so now we've just got a couple of airports in there. What we can do is go to the McDo menu. And if we go to the Atsu menu here, this year the FMCG is just the uh, the homepage that you see right at the start with the engine details and the nav database. Uh, so go back to this, go to the Atsu menu, select the desired system it says. This is where we can get our weather and the OAC menu. So let's just pop that in here. Okay, so this is one of the really cool new features. So we can do an ATIS request or we can get a weather request. For now, I'm just going to go with a weather request. And you can select, do you want the meta? Or do you want the current forecast? So if I click meta, and we've already got airport here, so K Boston, uh, K JFK. Um, you can add other ones here. So if you wanted to get your alternate, you could type that in there. Uh, so let's just say, um, so is that LaGuardia? I'm, I may have made that up. Uh, but either way, let's pop that in there. So, return to the menu. Uh, oh, sorry, no, go back to the weather request. And, oh, look what has disappeared. Maybe that was the wrong uh, wrong code. I'm used to flying in uh, in Europe. So, what you do there is you've requested a meta, press the send button, message queued, and message will now be sent. All right, so whilst i'm waiting for oh there we go message sent so what we then do is if i just come back here and it only takes a couple of minutes and already there we go see this flashing up here we've got a new message saying company message so go back to the uh, mcdo and if you go just back to the uh, aoc menu so message is sent that's the one that we've just sent which for some reason isn't there never mind uh, but this is the important one received messages Let's click on that here's the meta and there it is for Boston and JFK I must put the wrong code in for the Guardian which is why uh, which is why that wasn't there so apologies for that but yeah and that is the current meta now important question where is this meta coming from is it coming from online is it coming from Microsoft Flight Simulator itself well actually here's another great little bit a new feature you can actually choose where you want to get this meta from so if we just come out of um, of this menu just go back to the McDo menu and here is the options button we've got uh, these two options here as well but they are not currently working so uh, don't worry about that for now but if we go to the options menu 
here is where we've got some really neat little features. So, the ATIS, where would you like our ATIS to come from? So if we select on there, you can select it from FAA, that's US only. You can get it from VATSIM, if VATSIM is online and providing an ATIS, or if you use Pilot Edge, etc. So if I select VATSIM, which is where I normally fly, so that's now uh, set for that and come back so where are we getting our meta from again you can go in there and select so meteo blue which is microsoft flight simulator unreal weather fats in package etc now i always leave this to meteo blue which is microsoft flight simulator because that is the weather that you are seeing outside of your screens i don't know if rex comes as an option in here if you've got rex installed but for now i don't have it so meteo blue that is what Microsoft Flight Simulator is telling the simulator it, the weather is. So we might as well use that because then you know that that is going to be accurate. But of course you can use any of these as well. So let's just go back. Where are we getting the TAF from if you want the forecast? You've got a couple of options there. And this is a neat little feature as well, the ideas. Now, you'll know from experience flying this, uh, the fly by wire mod, if you uh, turn the ideas on, it normally takes seven or eight minutes for them to align. Well, they've added this little option here where you can actually change the align time. So you can have it set to real, which I do. You can have it set to fast, which presumably is a little faster than real. And uh, an instant. So you come on the moment you turn the ideas on, bang, there they are, and they're working for you. I keep it on real. Uh, just to be realistic. Note this, once you change this option, it only works next time you fire the aircraft up. So you would have to change the option, exit the sim, and then come back in for uh, for that to work. So if we just go back here, the acceleration altitude as well. I, I don't know if different airlines have different standard operation procedures on, uh, on that, but if you wanted to change the acceleration altitude to say a thousand feet, there we go. And you've got the self-test as well for the uh, the screens. You know, if you turn, when you turn the batteries on, you, the other screen's got the self-test. You can go in there and... Uh, oh, I thought you could actually go and change that. I don't know if you can actually edit that, but it's realistic for me, so I'm not going to bother changing that at all. Okay, so... That is a great little system of being able to uh, of get the weather. Now, one of the other things that you can do on the Atsu menu, and this this is really, really neat, and I know this works because uh, we did this during an online stream the other day. If you go back to the uh, AOC menu, see this little option here, free text. Select that. Right, okay. So, if you've got a friend who's also flying a version of the fly-by-wire mod um, in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, you can send them a message. So let's just say I wanted to chat to a fellow EasyJet uh, pilot. I'd need to know his call sign, so it would be easy, oh, I don't know, 1884, we'll just make that up. So you pop that call sign in there, and you literally send them a message. Uh, pop that in there so that's line one of the message you can add anything else so I don't know how are you uh, are you or you could ask them what the weather is like where they are or anything like that they ask them anything you want greetings how are you um, you then press the send message and telex is not enabled if you come across that just go back to the options menu and free text disable so confirm disable see I thought this was actually working uh, so I wonder if it's because I used two lines the last time I did that it worked absolutely fine so just bear with a minute we'll just make this uh, make this up again it could also be of course that this particular EasyJet call, call sign isn't online um, but yeah I did have this working press hello there's your first message and send. Oh, that's annoying. That really is annoying because this was working the other day. I would imagine it's possibly because um, we've not got uh, that particular call sign flying. But if you know a friend that is flying the fly by wire mod and you know their call sign, you can send a message to them and it just comes up here when they reply back as a company message, uh, which I thought was very, very neat. I'm uh, frustrated I can't show you that. Uh, but let's just go back to. Um, 
back to that so there's a couple of new features there with the weather the fact you can message other pilots if you know their call sign and one of the other things you can do as well is you can now edit the constraints of um, of your flight which becomes particularly important if you're uh, if you're approaching an airport and you want to come down sort of like a, a step climb and just to show this to you um, if I just select a quick departure route here, we're on 15 right, uh, doo -doo -doo. select the Lipster 6 departure. Okay, so you can see we actually don't have any constraints listed here, and it's probably best if I do this with, uh, with constraints turned on up here, just so you can see. So at the moment, you can see there's a uh, one of these user points here. We can ignore that. But at Fox, it's just got uh, you can see the repeat quotation marks here, 490, which is why really uh, manage mode doesn't work on uh, departure a lot of the time. You need to uh, go into VS speed. Uh, but let's say at Fox, actually, you want it to be at uh, a thousand feet. So that's now in there. At the next one, boat, you can go and edit that. Let's set that. I'm making these figures completely up just for this tutorial, by the way. Um, very good. So that's now at 3,000 feet. And the next one set to 7,000 feet. Oh, not 70,000 feet. That'd be a good climb rate, wouldn't it? And you can then go through and look. It should should so fox i set for above a thousand feet if i turn the constraints off and turn these back on again does that now work there we go look so we've got a thousand feet for uh, that one if i just work his way through thousand feet three thousand feet and uh, what was the last one i put on there seven thousand feet yeah so you now got constraints working pretty well notice however and this is pretty important what you can't do is you'll see that these constraints are they have to be above 1,000 feet or above 3,000, above 7,000. I haven't yet worked out a way of putting in minus figures for these. So if someone does know how to do that or has come across it, please let us know in the comments because that is quite important. Because what you would actually get here, this actually looks like quite a nice little rate of climb. And if you popped it into manage mode up to 7,000 feet, you'd expect the aircraft to give a nice climb rate out of there. Unfortunately, it won't work. It will still climb and shoot up at about 6,000 feet per minute because all you've told the aircraft at this point is you want to actually be above 1,000 feet, above 3,000 feet, above 7,000 feet. So realistically, it could get you to 10,000 feet by this point here and uh, it would still be following the constraints where this does come in handy however is if you are uh, if you are obviously descending and approaching an airfield because a fair uh, well let's just quickly do it JFK let's just select an arrival uh, oh goodness knows that'll do ILS 22 left um, do you know I'm not bothered which star we're popping it's just for example and tutorial purposes so if i now just go to the flight plan here okay so basically at hogs it's got eighteen thousand feet and then at carmen it's got eleven thousand feet well we could actually pop in a couple of constraints here which would then give you a nice rate of descent if you wanted to do that so if we said eighteen thousand feet set this one to fifteen thousand feet notice it's got the minus there as well but you can't pop a minus in when you're changing the constraint. If I actually change this now, well, that's interesting because I know that a minus 15,000 feet, you can change that to plus 15,000 feet. This worked for me last time. Does that work this time? Oh, that's annoying. Let me just try a different altitude. Uh, so plus, let's call it plus 15,155. Try that. No, again, it's... Uh, it's below. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure I had that working. Uh, I just find that again. Uh, so there it was. Uh, so uh, this is why VNAV doesn't work. Look at these constraints. So you've got eighteen thousand, and you can see the minus sign here. So it's minus eighteen thousand, minus fifteen thousand five hundred, minus eighteen thousand again, minus eleven thousand. So if we could change that one at least. Uh, to 13,000, I think that works. 
yeah, 13,000. But because we can't actually change them to plus or minuses, that means we don't get a nice rate of descent, which is frustrating. I'm sure there has to be a way, or fly by way, we'll certainly be working on it. Um, see, this is where it goes wrong. You have to be minus 11,000 feet here, but by hair, you need to be above 16,000 feet. Well, I haven't got the chart up for that, but I'm pretty certain that's not correct. So one of the things that really screws up VNAV is the fact that these constraints are wrong. Um, but I bet if I went into this one, that would have a... Uh, oh, it's not even letting me go into that one, is it? That's a shame. Uh, but yeah, there has to be a way of making these uh, plus figures or minus figures as, uh, as we would want them. So, it's getting there, isn't it? But they, uh, there are a couple of new features that you, can, uh, that you can pop in. What I have discovered is that you can pop, obviously, constraints in if there is no constraint already there. So they are obviously part of a SID and part of a star. But I was doing an RNAV procedure the other day, which, funnily enough, was not in the MCDO, not in the database, and I physically programmed the, uh, the RNAV arrival in. And because it used uh, plus altitudes, you need to be above them, it actually performed the RNAV procedure quite nicely, with VNAV as well. So the biggest thing I feel at the moment holding VNAV back is the fact that the constraints aren't always accurate. But never mind, everything else seems to be, uh, it's certainly a very flyable aircraft, so uh, yeah, with the new McDo, we've got a couple of new features, the options is really, really good, we've got weather straight to the, uh, straight to the system, and um, of course, you can. I promise you can send messages to your friends that are flying because uh, I have done it. But you do need to know their call sign. Hope that uh, all that little tutorial on uh, the latest features has been useful for you. And uh, I'm sure there's plenty more to come. Hope you've had a good week. Please hit the subscribe button for more tutorials and updates as they come along. And of course, we have the live streams throughout the week. If there's any particular uh, tutorials you'd like to see or any questions you've got, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.